Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, it is Tuesday, May 26th. Uh, just to remind you, the projects are due on Thursday, master study projects. So any questions sooner is better because uh, it's the first, it's our first like real big project that I'll be you know, grading accordingly. Uh, as I mentioned last time, that rubric's posted, so you can always look into that to get a better sense of how things will be graded. Um, I'm gonna post up some other extra credit opportunities here soon this week. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, uh, you know, today we're just gonna kind of focus on doing some self-portrait work. So before we do that, you know, I've been meeting with some students and talking, and I think, you know, one thing I left out because of the online setup we got going on is uh, doing uh, exercises with gesture. Um, it can be a hard concept to explain even in person uh, and it's usually best uh, illustrated and um, explained if there's a live model because generally gesture and figure drawing go together uh, pretty well. So uh, doing <clears throat> gestural drawings with still lifes is a little bit more challenging but it can be a helpful way to lay things out. So <clears throat> I used to refer to gesture as like trying to capture the overall essence of what you're looking at in, you know, 30 seconds. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> but I had some students tell me that the word essence felt kind of like new agey hippie. So rather than the essence, like think of it as the overall gist. Or in another way, you're like laying out a map as quickly as you can for your future drawing. Uh, in one way, you know, if I told you to write your name really nicely in your best cursive or whatever, you take your time and you do it, you know, real clean and nice, like calligraphic, nice full name. But if I said you have to write your name, your entire name in one second, you know, you have to go from start to finish, it would just look like a scribble. But you would know what it was or what it was supposed to be. And that's kind of another way to think of a gesture. It's like a quick, loose scribble. It doesn't look like what you're drawing, but it maps things out. So maybe just like an overall sense of where things are. You go quick, it's at the most 30 seconds, just a quick, loose, like blind contour, blind continuous contour kind of messy scribble that helps you just kind of intuitively put things down on the page. Um, and we'll talk a bit about that with self-portraits today. So I'm not going to give you a full demo on how to do a self-portrait because I find that if I do that, then everyone does it the same way. And so I think what's better off is, um, just kind of letting you, I'll, I'll, I'll show you some basic kind of parameters and things that are helpful for dealing with self-portraits and then just let you kind of draw them how you want. And you know, it's silly because it's like, <clears throat> if I say, this is how you draw, excuse me, <clears throat> this is how you draw a nose, and this is how you draw lips. That, I mean, that might work if you're a comic book illustrator, but the reality is we all look different. Uh, so there's no one way to draw nose or lips because everyone's got different features. <clears throat> so really it's not all that different than drawing anything else. <clears throat> the, the, I think that drawing self-portraits or drawing the figure in general is tough because the one thing to draw some inanimate objects like uh, some boxes or brooms or whatever you've been drawing and working on throughout the semester, but to actually draw another person, especially yourself, it's a little bit more weighted because we, we're people and we know what people should look like. And when something's off, uh, it makes it a little bit, that was, those was kind of like issues in a drawing are a lot more glaring. So it can be a harder thing to draw in that sense because you're going to notice your mistakes more. <clears throat> or maybe a better way to think of it is just like areas that need to be improved on, not necessarily mistakes. So keep that in mind. Doing a self-portrait is also tricky because we all have our own like issues with, whether we admit it or not with our own kind of uh, appearance and the way we present ourselves. So all that kind of psychological stuff gets wrapped into it as well. So 
like with anything, the more you can just let go of all that and try to be honest in your drawing and do the best you can with it, um, the better your drawing is going to be. So uh, these self-portraits that we're going to do, once again, this will all be in your assignments right up, but the self-portraits we're going to do are basically like shoulders to the top of your head. So you can, I mean, I don't want to see just any floating heads, but they're going to be straight on. So, uh, you know, there's other ways to do self-portraits. There's like profile and three-quarter view, but it's easiest to do it straight on because you can set up a mirror in front of you or even just use like your computer screen flipped showing you uh, an image of yourself. The issue with that is it flips things backwards in a way. I guess kind of mirrors do that as well, but <clears throat> um, a mirror is better because you don't have to deal with resolution issues of a screen. So you find a mirror, just prop it right up in front of you and you're gonna draw your face from straight on, like shoulders up. Uh, so I want these to be at least life size, if not bigger than life. So I don't wanna see any like little tiny self portraits. Use a minimum half sheet of your nice paper, if not more. Uh, for today's purposes, I'm just doing the demo on, on newsprint. And it's not, like I said, it's not really a full on demo. demo. We're just gonna talk about some different kind of universal things that are true about our faces 99% of the time. <clears throat> um, so the first thing you wanna do after you get yourself all set up, you can use whatever material you want that we've used in class so far. So you can, it's gonna be on your nice paper, but you could use charcoal, you could use pencil, you could use your pens, uh, or you could use ink washes and brushes, brushes with India ink if you've been experimenting with that at all. Uh, you can combine materials, it's totally up to you. Um, but you're gonna work on this for our, for like an hour and a half today. And the reality is, is you're probably not gonna finish, but get as far as you can uh, and you'll get your points. But if this, if and you'll turn that in Thursday before noon, uh, your final, pro either your master study project will be due Thursday night, right before midnight. Um, so, you know, you've got some time uh, after these are due to, to do some final work on your uh, master studies if you need to. Uh, but it, it's, it's another option for extra credit is if you wanted to keep working on this uh, and actually finish your self portrait, you can do that and just turn it in, uh, submit a photo of that before the end of the semester, before our final project is due. And uh, you can have an extra 20 points extra credit. So uh, easy way to, Get another option for extra credit but ultimately with self portraits the first thing you want to do is figure out like what shape head you have you know we all have different shape heads for those of you that uh maybe you use a helmet um or like a motorcycle helmet you know that they don't all fit they're they're shaped differently because some people have really long oval heads some people have rounder heads um just the shape of your skull and so uh Got to kind of get a sense of that. You can even measure too. Like I can kind of hold this up to my face and be like, okay, one up, or maybe I'll start this way and go one across is like one and a half up to the top. And you can get a, a, a sense for that. But, you know, speaking of gesture, what I like to do looking in the, looking in the mirror and uh, it's just like real quick, is just kind of move and lay it out. So that would just be, you know, it's just an oval and you, I don't know how well you can see that, but you can just really quickly lay out a map for where you're gonna draw later. And then I can go in and I can check this, like if this, if this is this length, I said it was one and a half. So it's pretty accurate. So I can use this to then start building up my drawing off of. And if it wasn't right, I just keep like loosely doing that until um, I've started to kind of establish the, the best kind of overall shape for my head. So in my case, I've got this kind of like long oval shape. Some people have more of like a, you know, more of a rounded kind of shape to their head. Sharpie, so you can see this a little bit better. So I can set this up in a way you guys can see. 
So I'll just show you real quick a few different kind of shape heads. So maybe you've got like more of an oval shape here. You can see in this example, it's got kind of more of a pointy chin. Look at your jawline, like maybe you've got like a more broad kind of jawline and then more squared off. So you're, the shape of your head, and I know this is upside down for you, might be along those kind of lines. Um, either way, once you get a sense of the shape of your head, that kind of overall shape, let me see if I can get this set up a little bit. Um, like I said, we all have different features, but there are some universal things that we can all kind of agree on. So if you're looking at this from, from my angle, um, I'm going to do this upside down so you can actually see. But if we were to draw an imaginary line down the middle of the head, this isn't the top of your face right here. This is the top of your head. So looking at me, if I'm uh, wearing a hat, I mean, that's going to be even lower, maybe. So like the top, that's the top of your skull right here. Uh, and then the, my hat might even be coming up a little bit higher. Uh, but we're, we won't worry about that just yet. So like the top of my hat might be up higher. But ultimately, as far as where your features are, there's some universals there that are, are similar with everyone. So like if I take this line down the center of my face, First off, our faces aren't perfect mirrors across. I don't know if you've ever seen those. They're at like science museums and stuff where they'll take half, they'll take a picture of your face and then they'll take half of it and flip it and then they'll combine it and, and you don't even end up looking like you at all. You're like a completely different person. Um, but ultimately, like if this is the center line of your face, if you, from the, from the top of your skull to the bottom of your chin, draw a line right along the center, like so, that's generally where your eyeballs are. Um, so for instance, on this example here, if this is a center line, like if you put one, this is a huge mistake I see people make. So like if your eyes are way up here and this is your hair, you're gonna, or, or they're way down low, it's gonna look funny. So generally speaking, you can take that oval Divide it in half this way and then divide it in half that way. And that's the line in your eyes. That's the kind of center line of your face. Um, so from here, like side to side, side to side. And once again, like this, these sides over here, they're not, you can see on me, like my eyes don't go all the way to those edges. Those, your face isn't a flat, just like anything in, in the real world. It's not flat. There's curve and contour. So those sides are over here, like on the side of your head, these edges here. They're not, it's not like here or, you know, those, it seems obvious with those things that kind of trip people up a lot. So we've got this divided in half, we've got that line dividing in half there. The center of your eyes, the pupils, generally speaking on this, are going to be halfway between here and here. So like you can pretty much assume pupil pupil. Um, and from there, you just kind of like look at yourself and figure out the overall shape of your eye. So, you know, we all have different features, like I said. So once again, I start just kind of doing this upside down, but, you know, get an overall sense of like the shape of your eye. The way that I usually will do this is just like start with you know, light vine charcoal or start with a, a really light pencil and just work this out really quickly. Uh, you can see that my eyes, there's space here because when I'm looking at myself, there's space. Like the edges of my eyeballs don't come all the way to the edge of my face. I'd be some kind of weird alien. So keep that in mind. These are some of the mistakes I see. Um, another thing to keep in mind is, you know, if your eye is this wide, generally speaking, there's one width of each eye in between between each eye so like if you measure the, the length of this eye and then you measure the middle and it's smaller or it's way wider than the length of each eye then you need to make some adjustments so another example over here um, if, if this is the line of the eyes and either the eyes are way out here it's gonna look funny right or sometimes I'll see people put them like 
right next to each other. Here's eyebrows. Um, that's going to look really funny as well. So generally speaking, like this is a pretty standard breakdown. So from there, like where your no the bottom of your nose and lips are is variable, right? Because we all look a little bit different. But generally speaking, you can kind of divide this length in half from between the eyes down in half. And generally speaking, your nose will be somewhere in there. And then halfway again, generally speaking, your lips will be in there somewhere. So that's just like a general rule of thumb and then you might make some adjustments like maybe this comes up a little bit for you and you know maybe you have a large jaw stocky jaw so maybe like the lips are up and you got like a bigger chin going on um so from there you know like i said this is the top of the head so if this is your hair um it might come up a little higher up here till you you know, maybe you have a lot of hair, it's like way up here, but think of this as the top of your skull, not the top of your face. Um, as far as doing the hair, I, we talked about this a little bit in the last video, but you know, your best move for hair is gonna be about variety of mark making and incorporating value. So like if you try to draw every hair on the head and they're just sticking up like this off the top, it's gonna look like a little kid's drawing. So generally it's gonna be like, okay, maybe there's some dark areas here and then you can actually see some of the lines of the hair and you're just kind of like building that up with light and shadow as you go. And maybe every now and then there's like a wisp of hair. You can do the individual hairs, but for the most part, you're not gonna draw every hair on their head, on your head, it's impossible. Um, you know, you'll get a sense of like where you're, ears are and you know slowly what I like to do is just slowly work my way around the drawing and then I'll refine it as I go so this might be the first or second pass and then with each pass I come in and start like okay actually I'm gonna clean up some of the shape in here and slowly start to kind of figure out a little better where things are this is important for drawing in general. I've used this analogy, I don't know if I've done this in this class with some of you that I've talked individually, but drawing in general, um, you can think of it as like, you get a big plate of food, it's dinner time. Most of us, I mean, maybe not my three-year-old or maybe some of you eat this way still, but most of us kind of work our way around the meal, right? It all kind of finishes more or less at the same time. You don't like eat all your meat, eat all your potatoes eat all your salad or whatever it is you eat. It, generally, we don't eat that way. Like we work our way around it and you wanna think of drawing the same way. So think of it in passes, like do that quick gesture, get a layer down and then slowly start, you know, mapping out where things are. That's your second pass. And then after that, you start coming in and, you know, spend a little time on the eyes and move to the nose, move to the mouth, the come, mouth and then come back and then move outside, inside. If you spend all your time just doing one eye, you draw one eye perfectly, and then you do the next eye, and then you do the nose. It's like eating your food separate, and but the consequences are way worse because your drawing's not gonna develop as nicely, and you're gonna be less likely to make the changes you need to make to fix it. So like, you do one eye, you, do, you spend an hour on it, and you spend another hour on the next eye, and then you realize, oh shoot, they actually need to be a little bit closer together, a little bit further apart, you could have just done a quick sketch and figured that out. And now you have to, you've wasted an hour and you have to come back and erase and do it. And a lot of students I've noticed just don't want to do that. They have, we all have a limited amount of time. So we're like, well, I don't have the time. They're just going to leave it. And then you've got this drawing where you look like an alien because your eyes are too far apart. So, you know, work your way around the drawing. It's the best way to draw and go light to dark, but that's not always the case. Like, Sometimes when I'm doing self-portraits, I like to lay down a bunch of value uh, with charcoal over the whole thing. Because ultimately, you know, if we're looking at our face and like I'm just coming out of winter, basically in spring, pretty pasty, no sun on my skin. And with that said, like, you know, we all have different complexion, but no matter who you are, there is value all over your face. I mean, if the whites of your eyes are the whitest white and like maybe reflection on my hat and like maybe the tip of my nose you can see the light hitting it 
no, maybe if you can see your teeth a little bit, but there's nowhere else where there should be paper showing through, right? Like there's value everywhere. Maybe there's some little highlights here and there, but there's value everywhere. You know, you're going to have, depending on where the light's hitting, you're going to have shadows generally under your jaw, under your neck, like under your brow. I've got a hat on, so I've got shadows here on the ears. Like you're going to have shadow. So however you lay down value, uh, that's going to be important. That's why I say, that's why I said earlier, this isn't, I'm not going to show you, this is how you draw a nose because ultimately it's just like drawing anything else. Like where's their highlight? Where's their shadow? Where's their contour? Where can you see different kind of light sources and different, what kind of marks can you make? Where do you need a line and where don't you? Where are you going to be more successful putting just shading and value or building up, you know, different kinds of cross hatching and mark making to show texture and surface. It's just like drawing anything else. Um, with that being said, like sometimes it's really helpful to have value in the background. Like if I've got, you can see where I'm sitting, the value behind me is darker than the value on my face for the most part. So, you know, filling in some of that value around the head is going to be helpful to bring out some of the values in the face. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is, is neck. And then you can draw yourself. Like what I've seen some people do is do these like little necks sticking out there. And that might work if you're drawing a caricature of someone, but generally speaking, like even if you have a really skinny neck, it doesn't grow out of the bottom of your chin. So generally speaking, you know, it's going to, you can do the measuring and figure out, you know, where that neck is going to come out. And you know, your shoulders might be way down here somewhere. Your shoulders unless you're super hunched over, aren't going to come out of your ears either. So, so just keep an eye on those things. Those are just some basics. Um, so without giving you a full demo and I drew it with the Sharpie just so you could see it, but usually I would do that with a light pencil, just building it all up in those initial phases to build my map, my kind of gestural map of where everything is. And then as I do each pass, maybe I'll darken it. And then you can come in and do some subtractive work too. I've seen people that do really well with just laying out uh, some vine charcoal, like a three or four value, and then use their eraser to do some gestural stuff and, and go back and forth between additive and subtractive. Um, you know, so I would like to see some value all across your face. Like if, if there's not value across your whole face, minus the like little highlights, whites of your eyes, reflections, it's not going to look, I mean, it'll look, it could look cool and stylized, but it might look more cartoony or comic booky. So, you know, keep, keep all that in mind. Um, have fun with it. I'll post this in the write up. I look forward to seeing all your projects. Uh, Cause of the holiday, I got a little bit behind on, you know, posting up, points, but I'll, I'll work on getting that done. Just a heads up, there's a chance we might, uh, my family might try to head up the mountain uh, and we'll be away from service for like maybe Wednesday and Thursday night. Uh, it might be Thursday and Friday. Either way, I'll keep you posted in, a, in an email. Uh, so there's a chance it might be away from service for a night or two. Uh, but I'll let you know about that. Have fun with these portraits. Let me know if you have questions and I'll talk to you guys soon.